mixed and uh, perceived uh, uh, overall strength of groupness is high too. So uh -huh. I was not expecting that. And uh, you, what were you expecting for all of I was really hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what we mean, okay, so this is really to tell you where we are now. This table here, we build it together without going back to each percentage. That's something I need to do. When we revise it, each of the plots will represent 10%. So we think this is basically fine, but it needs to be double-checked and fine-tuned. And this will translate into uh, a finer analysis here. This is this is relational. So mix here, what does it mean? It means that when you ask them about their friends, they say, yes, I have some friends that, from all race, but my closest friends, my intimate relationships are with <coughs> in-group members. That's one thing. The other thing is they have a strong sense that you're not supposed to be isolationist or separatist. The, the culture of diversity in the US is permeating even the working class. So, you know, they're not supposed to, cl to make a lot of claims based on race because then they're attacked for, you know, being racist themselves. So the argument of reverse racism is, is really lurking in the background, which is why we describe them as paradoxical, you know, to point to this tension. It's not politically correct for blacks to only hang out with blacks in an environment where diverse culture is, is paradigmatic even if symbolically. But it's hard to do if you're living in a segregated uh, environment. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, exactly. Now, if you yeah. have spatial segregation, high, then... Yeah. Uh, but yeah. work is not. So if yes. you look yeah. at the context where it happens, it's not surprising that 82% of the uh, incidents occur, occur at work, because it is where the, the, the interaction across groups occur. It's true, though, that we have uh, we had a probe for that, so it might be uh, artificially high. But we're, you know, all the literature says that it's at work that it occurs. But beyond that, you can see differences. Uh, well, you don't see it here, but um, yeah, the context here you can see differences between the groups. So uh, with the Ethiopians. Ethiopians exper experience it a lot in institutions like schools and the army. Um, and for Palestinians, public spaces, checkpoints, transportation, very, very high. So, but across for all the groups, work is the primary place. And to go back for, to the American case, uh, so the public space, schools, and services, I believe. Yeah, services is very high as well. Excuse me, I have a question because I see that the quality can be credited for the part of the class. No, that's not just for me, it's for everyone. For the United States, we had five coders. Okay. I've seen Molly Marone Mallard, she's been working well, and now it's really that in quelque part the concept of class devient. And I find it surprising to see that at least euh, pour euh, les populations américaines, que ça, ça devient le passé. J'aimerais savoir, uh -huh. parce que je sais que c'est un concept fondamental dans votre travail. Ouais, ouais, ouais. Qu'est-ce que vous faites de cette analyse, de cette perception-là? Je ne sais pas si... Ouais. Moi, je trouve ça intriguant. Là, ben oui, moi aussi. <rire> <rire> le, le projet de demande de subvention, toutes les hypothèses avaient à faire avec classe, mais on en est venu. Si on regarde les données, les différences sont petites, alors on ne pouvait pas construire l'argument autour de ça. Alors, pourquoi? Euh, bon, la littérature nous dit qu'il n'y a pas de vocabulaire public pour parler des différences de classe aux États-Unis. Mais dans le contexte où l'inégalité euh, s'est accrue de façon euh, très accentuée au cours des 20 dernières années, je ne pense pas que ce soit vrai. Quand j'ai fait Monuments and Manners, les, les gens me parlaient de Ken and Bar non, the Dignity of Working Man, Ken and Barbie People. Ils avaient un vocabulaire pour parler des différences de classe, mais ce n'était pas un vocabulaire marxiste. -dire, quand tu dis « the Ken and Barbie people », ils parlent de gens comme nous. On est les Ken and Barbie people. C'est des gens qui sont narcissiques, qui, sont, euh, qui, sont, qui se préoccupent beaucoup de leur succès individuel, qui manquent de solidarité par rapport à leurs amis, qui travaillent trop fort, qui ne s'occupent pas de leurs enfants. 
dire, une, euh, il y a un gros chapitre de Dignity of Working Man qui est précisément sur leur langage de classe, qui dit donc, il y a un langage de classe est en fait très développé. Euh, c'est disons, ici c'est tout simplement le, le fait, je pense que euh, la, beaucoup d'Américains, euh, beaucoup d'Américains ne comprennent pas qu'en fait il y a une classe moyenne noire. Tu vois, alors quand ils interagissent avec des Noirs, ils pensent tout le temps de ghetto black. Et c'est une différence qui s'est développée depuis qu'Obama a été élu, qu'il y a de plus en plus une conscience du fait qu'il y a une middle class, upper middle class noire qui est quand même assez présente dans tous les, dans tous les milieux du travail de travail. Alors je pense que c'est... Euh, c'est pas pour dire qu'il n'y a pas de différence entre ces deux groupes-là, c'est plutôt la façon dont ils vivent leur expérience de la discrimination et pas très différente. Et moi, j'aurais cru, parce que les Noirs de la middle class ont beaucoup plus de formes de capital, capitaux, euh, ils, ils se sentent beaucoup plus euh, euh, légitimes à, pour la confrontation, mais ce n'est pas nécessairement le cas, parce qu'ils ne veulent pas être « every day, I don't want to be the angry black, I want to be the professionally successful lawyer ». Je veux dire, l'expérience de, de vivre ça au jour le jour est énormément fatigante. Et puis, ce n'est pas, pas nécessairement une source de plaisir non plus. Alors, ils préfèrent être euh, appréciés pour ce qu'ils ont à offrir plutôt que d'être toujours en train de défoncer les la gestion du soir, c'est ça? Oui, c'est ça. Alors, euh, la gestion du soir, la différence ici, tu vois, c'est 47 à 50, mais les, les, les cas spécifiques, euh, les différences sont très petites. Strategic silence, tu vois, 11 3 Competence at work, on a décrit ça comme une stratégie néolibérale qui n'est pas du tout présente ici, mais quand on regarde les « ideal responses », c'est beaucoup plus présent. Mm -hmm. Self-improvement. Et là, il y a des différences de classe. Il y a plus de différences de classe dans les « ideal responses » que dans les réponses actuelles. Mais je pense que quand, ce qui se passe quand ils décrivent des, des, des faits spécifiques, ils se préoccupent de tout simplement euh, short-term problems. Alors que quand on leur pose des questions sur les stratégies idéales, c'est vraiment long-term strategy. What should we do if we could? Alors, la, la question de la pénalité, de, je veux dire, commencer à euh, se ramasser dans une bataille physique, tu vois, est beaucoup moins présente. Alors, la question de la navigation des, des dangers euh, est moins présente. Oui. Oui. Just following up on that, um You had on your tables what the degree to which they felt that the discrimination was on the basis of class, it was high, medium, low. Mm -hmm. um, but given that you, your core concept here is groupness, mm -hmm. um, have you got in here the degree to which each of these groups already conceived of themselves uh, by, by their class identity? I'm thinking in particular of the American blacks, where there's Uh, yeah. if, I, uh, if I know the situation, I don't know the situation very well, but there, there is a push against, mm -hmm. there's kind of a black solidarity against mm -hmm. class division within, mm -hmm. among blacks, mm -hmm. and therefore they're less, are they less likely to see the discrimination on the basis of class because that's not how they see themselves. Mm -hmm. And the, in the case of the Brazilian cases, uh, there the black people have a class consciousness, mm -hmm. they see themselves as a class, mm -hmm. and therefore are more likely to see the discrimination against them on that basis. Mm -hmm. Well, we have questions where You know, classical interviews, how do you define yourself? The first categories are all moral. I'm a good person, like blah, blah, blah. Um, and I don't remember that class was very salient in these responses. They might describe themselves in occupational term, you know. Um, but what came out of this is a lot of the stereotypes, you know, often this notion of strong black solidarity would Uh, come with self-segregation, and you can see how low it is under isolation and autonomy here, 9%. Very few of them embrace the Afrocentrism, <laughs> you know. So it's possible that there's plenty of people like that who just didn't want to be involved in our study. You know, I think the maybe this the Afrocentric, strongly isolationist are underrepresented. I did myself an interview with one of them. I didn't do many interviews. But with the African stuff everywhere, everyone in the room had African names, and, you know. Yes. I'm wondering, then, following up from that, what sort of uh, response rate you had in the different societies and yes. from different subgroups, male, female, yes. different <laughs> classes, et cetera, if yes. you had any sense yeah. of similarities or variations? Yeah. It was very difficult. It was very difficult. I think this is uh, not only our problem, I think increasingly anyone who's asking 
two hour interviews. We were paying them, I don't remember if it was $20 or something like that. I have a student now who's doing a research project in Detroit and she's offering $20, and everyone wants to be studied. <laughs> 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 uh, so, you know, it's sad, but she's never had. It's really easy to get responded to Detroit these days. My answer is not perfect, not ideal, I, not ideal at all. But, you know, it, I, li I have a paper on methodology called A Life of Sad but Justified Choices. <laughs> it's like you do what you can. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Michelle. I think we're going to have to stop on that because, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the food has arrived. <laughs> Thank you very much for this uh, talk, and uh, everybody, uh, please enjoy. Uh, join us afterwards for uh, for the reception, and join me now in thanking uh, Michelle and Montreal.